notes here. Let's get right to it. Got the panels out here, soaking up some morning sun. A few bit of haze in there too. But before we get to the power box, I want to show you a couple things on the panels here. Of course, I can carry these with one hand with a handle there. No big deal, but I picked up something that's pretty cool. This is from Windy Nation, right here. It's a fuse in here. It's a 30 amp fuse. A little overkill for this small little array, but just a little ounce of protection. And I fabricated the solar PV feeder cable myself to slap down some redneck style uh, MC4 connections. And this is landscaping wire 12 AWG. And let's follow this inside. I'll show you. Beautiful day. Record heat here in Oklahoma, too. We're going to have some fun here in a second. So let's go through some of the good stuff here on this power box. And uh, basically top to bottom and where I'm at and what it can do. And we'll uh, turn the circular saw on and I'll show you that too. I've made a lot of fine-tuning, a lot of adjustments on this to make it work correctly. I got the all that box put in with a exterior patio style thing here, cover. The fans, I had to reverse the flow because the inverter actually, the fans are back there and it blows that way, so I want to make sure the airflow is going that way. Got some rigid handles put on here, and I kind of screwed up with the holes a little bit, but uh, this will all be painted. It'll all look sexy when it's done. This is a little SAE connector that I fabricated here with uh, heat shrink butt connectors and electrical tape and adhesive heat shrink over that and here so that works out really good had a really difficult time trying to figure out how I was going to do a quick disconnect like, excuse me a lot of other solar guys did had these and they said it worked out real good but I wanted thick cable down here and this is about I think this is 12 gauge which isn't too bad it worked out pretty good and that goes right into the tracer EP ever solar charge controller MPPT this is the 20 amp version I got on eBay along with the MT5 box here which I just surface mounted here with a short little piece of cat5 cable I had laying around and right now my batteries are you know <laughs> They're in uh, absorb mode, so my power from the PV is, is low, as you can see, it's 27.5. I'm making about 100 watts right now. And the fan here, of course, blows air this way. It's blowing right on here, keep this cool. Blowing right on here, and the fan is adjustable. Look at that thing kicking, it's a lot of air pushing through here. This is six gauge, and I tin the ends here, screwed them in. We've got these rubber protectors here for the Blue Sea Systems panel mount circuit breaker switches. I'm using one gauge Temco welding cable for the power connections to the battery bank and to the back of the inverter. Let's take a look at the uh, front here. I want to show you. These are really, really slick. I've got a great deal on these too. I found these on Amazon. 135 amps at 24 volts. That's a lot of current. This inverter will probably only need less than <laughs> around 90 amps at any one time. But the price was one half. I said, ah, oh, what the heck. I'll get that it'll work just fine and it does this is an old meter box I just have direct wired into the battery bank because I like seeing the battery voltages 
and I've got another Blue Sea Systems OLED marine style voltmeter I'm going to put right here that is viewable during the day. This is just temporary, of course, on there. Let's look back here. This is going to be very difficult to see. The shelf, I had to um, trim this right here a little bit. Of course, made holes around there so I can access the wing nuts. On the other side of the battery, I've got them bolted down, actually, not with wing nuts, but actually um, star washer lock washers or lock and of course tin the ends of here too and also scraped them flat so the screw will sink into there and you want to check that periodically for tightness tautness. the ground <clears throat> is temporary I just have it hooked up to my you know CB radio and ground bus over there it's a grounding rod right down there probably already know that from my other video. One thing I did notice is that the casters are, they're all swivel casters. Big mistake. <laughs> really big mistake. This thing moves way too freely. So I'm going to have to get 5 inch non-swivel casters back here, you know the straight ones. And then I think I'm going to get ones that lock for the front there. Of course here's the back side with the air vent. These handles suck. See, As you can see I've already bent this one trying to lift it with the batteries over here. So I'm going to have to get some solid handles and fabricate in here. You live and learn. Beats the alternative for something like this. Okay. Alright, let's run this circular saw and I'll show you a couple of things. Alright, as you can see Got a full charge on here. And this dog right here is a 12 amp, 1440 watts. Um, says it right on right here. And watch what happens with the voltage here. This is all powered by solar. Right now I'm getting about 72 watts coming in the solar panels, so it's, I just drew a whole bunch of current off the batteries. So now it's in boost mode or bulk mode, and so now the batteries have to recover from using that power saw for 10-15 seconds or whatever. And as you can see, the voltage will steadily go up, and that's a good thing. Let's take a look at the uh, solar charge controller. Right, even at about 10 o'clock with crappy sun, the voltage is coming back up. We kill the batteries running this. If you look here, getting about 88 watts of PV coming in. recovering. And with this inverter, I should have videotaped this bar graph showing the watts. It peaked up to almost full and then back down to about 800-900. So I don't know if that's normal or not. Pretty cool. So let's shut this and I'll show you what it looks like all buttoned down. We'll be looking at some stencils too. I think 
Walmart has military style stencils, you know, like with a U dot, S dot, put it in there. I also had a viewer say, well, oh, you got to do the white triangle thing too for the loadmaster. That's a good idea too. Kind of make it look like an old military storage box or something along those lines. So, just doing the shake down here on this box, uh, working through all the fine tune details. It'll all be taken apart and painted and hose filled and all that stuff once I get the shakedown done. And I'm pretty happy with it. Right now it just has two Trojan 31 AGMs in there and they're working really, really good. See the battery voltage is already up to 29.1 back into absorb. That didn't take very long, less than three minutes. So real world, you know, you're out on a job site or whatever, you know, you use your power tools. You don't have to use a portable generator. Um, one thing I did learn, I did a full test yesterday, all day testing, and I learned that uh, for something like this to be even more usable, practical, I'm going to need more solar panels. Right now I've got 200 watts, but 400 watts is going to be better. 600 would be even, it would be ideal uh, in the solar charger can put out 20 amps, so that's 520 watts back down into the batteries. So, but 400 watts I think would be a more practical because I can carry both solar panels, you know, when they're folded up into a suitcase configuration, carry them both uh, with two hands without it being too much of a, you know, logistical nightmare. And the last thing I learned, too, aside from the casters and all this, this is, as is, about 185 pounds. Yes, it is heavy. And in order to get it in the back of a truck or an SUV, it's definitely going to be either two, three, maybe four-person lift to do it safely. Uh, but I'm also trying to scratch my head and figure out maybe a ramp system. Here, I'll show you on the back of my, my truck like a ramp system in worn winches has this electric winch that you can strap on here and strap on the box and, and just pull the thing right up the ramp so that's one thing that kind of sucks with having a heavy box to work with but it's going to be useful. <laughs> and right now with the batteries, excuse me, uh, if you do the amp hour, kilowatt hour conversion, it's about 2,500 watt hours, about 2.5 kilowatts of battery. 60% um, is about a kilowatt discharge at 60% point, state of charge. So I'm, I can get about one kilowatt out of these relatively safely. And, uh, you know, with additional two batteries in here, I'd get a full two kilowatts, and that would strictly be, you know, for overnight use, you know, running your refrigerator or whatever. But uh, more testing, and uh, it's really coming along pretty good. Actually, I'm pretty happy that this thing is working. There's no no drama with this. I mean, it just is is coming together really good. You know, aside from it being bulky and heavy. Um, I think it makes up for looking cool, <laughs> you know, with the OD green, and I'll put the US on there, so. Alright, hey, thanks for watching, and just wanted to give you this update. See ya.